You don't park there. I park there. You don't park there. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, that happened to me one time. I was in Strong Branch, New Jersey, man. My car broke down. You know what I mean? I, woo, I was able to like, skid my way to the curb. And it was no, you know, yellow. You know what I mean? It was just a regular old curb on a regular old street. I was like, thank God we're not in the middle of the street. And this clown boy comes out of the house. Hey, hey, hey. You don't park there. I park there. I said, like, where's your car, asshole? And go get it and fucking park there. Because I'm waiting for a tow truck. And go fuck yourself. Right? Hey, hey, hey. So the next weekend, I went to the flea market. And I was, you know what I mean? I wasn't feeling no love. And then the last table for $10, I got this guitar and it made me feel better. And I went home and said, ah, ah, ah. Let me park somewhere. I'm going to pull over and play this guitar. So this is like a mid-60s Eggman made guitar. Its brand is Alex. See, Alex, I have to do some research. I don't really know. I'm a little hyped up. Because I, you know what I mean? I had some car troubles. You know what I'm saying? Kind of hypes up, hypes up your heart. You know what I'm saying? But I, that was a while ago. Now I feel a little bit better. Now I'm okay. Now I'm okay. So it's an Alex guitar. I don't see any cracks on it. It's got all little accoutrements. It's got that beautiful Eggman plastic strap button intact. Like the tuners all work. It might be from the 50s even. It's got that plastic bridge piece. It doesn't really look like I really need to do much other than clean it. And like, you know what I mean? Looks like it has the Bella Folk stringer strings on it. So we're ready to go. Let's clean it off. I'll see you on the slab, and we're experience Alex sensation together. All right. Hey, hey, hey! You don't park there. I park there. I'll see you on the slab. One, two, three. And there it is, people. Now, it's actually got all the accoutrements. Everything's there. It's real grimy. But it seems to be like a time capsule piece because it's not really anywhere, anywhere. Fretboard is totally dry as a bone, but there are absolutely no marks on the frets. You know what I mean? Zero fret. The nut is original. Everything's nice. There's a couple scratches here and there. Tuners are all straight, working. This little caps there, usually missing from these Eggmans. Now, I did do my homework on Alex. I know who Alex is. So it's actually the Alexander Apfelbaum and Company. 286 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. It's Alexander Apfelbaum. Founded in like the late 50s, I believe. It might have been called the Cosmopolitan Group or something like that before that. I, I saw some names like that. By 61, they were already in litigation. I think they were doing like more food service. You know what I mean? Restaurant service back then. And then they saw the guitar. You know what I mean? Craze were going nuts. And they struck a deal in 62 or 3 to sell Eggman's in the United States. Reported Eggman's. Eggman guitars, branded Eggman. And the Eggman was starting to, you know what I mean, branch out in other, you know what I'm saying, areas. All Eggman's, you know, and they're all branded Eggman, you know what I'm saying. So this Affelbound, he, he went and actually <laughs> trademarked the Eggman logo as his, you know, property of his company. So he thus became the exclusive importer. You know what I'm saying? He, like, he jerked his own supplier. <laughs> he's a savage, you know what I mean? Eggman still manufactured guitars for a lot of different companies, but I mean, they didn't call them Eggman's. <laughs> this guy's a real maverick, man. They might have. They didn't care. Also, the Hugo Raumer harmonicas from West Germany. A bunch of Japanese guitars. You know what I mean? Morris Lipsky attempted to buy the company in 75, 74, something like that. One of the lines, Les Legs. And they all they went under together. Sued each other to the very end. That's it, man. <laughs> so, the tale has been told. We know who Alex is. 
The Alex trademark appeared in 1965, I believe, December of 65. They registered it as a trademark with this logo, this very exact logo. So this looks like an early one. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't look like the Eggman was very happy and put like a lot of work quality, quality-wise into this particular line. But it's still not a bad instrument. And for an Eggman, the action is still pretty nice. So we're bringing it into the laboratory. We're going to clean it up. We're going to hopefully play it a little bit and give you a little bit of a little song and dance routine. Because it's nice, you know what I mean? It's nice for the people. We're not even going to unstring it. We're just going to let it all hang out, man. It's kind of like a, a lazy man's instrument. It's all strung up the wrong way. It's, like, it's just like some type of amateur was in possession of this instrument for many years. Gave it a nice home note because it's not really messed up. It's a messed up light. You know what I'm saying? I'll see you in the laboratory. Welcome back to the laboratory. So I've already encountered our first pitfall. Every time I say, oh, this is going to be an easy episode, a quick one, you're in and out. So I figure I'm going to loosen these nice strings. These nice labelle folk strings. I'm going to loosen them up. Make it easy for the people. We'll start up on our journey, right now. So I started to loosen the E string. And I was realizing, I was more, I was turning, it wasn't loosening. It was just right where it was. I was like, what's going on in here? And I just pulled this guy right along. That is what's happening, man. Oh, oh. So, I mean... We can either try to pull this thing off, unscrew them, I and mean, that's probably the right way to do it. I probably could just pull it right off. It's only like, you know, went around a couple of times. But what I'm going to do, even lazier than that, I'm just going to fill this up with crazy glue. You know what I mean? Just fill it up. Clamp it on there. Wait for it to dry. Hope it moves. If it doesn't, I'm going to worry about something else. But I'm pretty sure it will. So I'll see you when we're all clamped. On the button, people. On the button, people. Right here. Clamp, pretty clamp, clamp. Got it clamped in a very rigged sort of fashion. See that? Extremely rigged. A little bit of old stupor glue, man. Hey, man. So let's just let it set. You know what I mean? I don't know. A little while. I was thinking of. Sprinkle a little bit of baking powder in there, but that usually leaves a mess. Let's say it's like a mess. Let's just let it set. Hopefully we can save the button. You know, sometimes doing this is like trying to reattach the, the, the arm from the drummer of Def Leppard like 20 years later. Well, I kept it in the freezer, man, you know. I thought maybe one day medical science. Uh, I don't know, mate. I don't think we can put this back on. I figured maybe one arm would be like 63 and the other arm would be like, you know, 22. And still have, you know, a lot of alcohol level in it. <laughs> what? 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 Seeing it a little bit. All right, so it's the next day we got it unclamped. You see it's working. We've saved the button. So let's go ahead and loosen these strings. Let's be very, very careful with that guy. Very, very careful. Let's loosen them up. Continue. All right. So we got the strings all loosened. This guy's working with us now. You know what I mean? Everybody's holding hands and fucking singing Hare Krishna. So what we're going to want to do is look at this dry ass fucking. It's like King Tut's fucking coffin. You know what I'm saying? This shit hasn't seen moisture in 25,000 years. So. Got some old-fashioned Wilbert, man. Straight up 50-year-old lemon oil. Right? I got that at the flea market 10 years ago. And by that point, it was already probably like 30, 40 years old. You know what I mean? And it's still, you know what I'm saying? It's still got a lot of lemon oil left in there, man. See, man? Lifetime supply, man. Lifetime guarantee of love, man. So let's just, you know what I mean? Get that all seeping in there. Let it seep for a good hour. Give this guy an hour, you know what I'm saying? He deserves it. 
We got the bridge put away. He's getting a little fragile after a while since it's, you know what I mean? It's pretty eld, man. This thing is eld as held, man. Right? Probably like 60 years old, right? Close to around there, right? So let's seep that up. I'll see you on the other side of town. I used a good, like, three tablespoons on it. You know what I'm saying? Just kept sopping up more and more and more. Give me. Yeah, that, man. You see big old grease stains. This is like the family comes over on coming to America and they're sitting on the motherfucker's couch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is ate it up, man. I can't get it to the point where there's, like, a, a grease, like, slick. You know what I mean? I like to get it, like, where I'm oversaturated. You know? Can't do it. That was, that was some hungry-ass fucking wood, man. So we'll let that kind of just set for a little while. You know what I'm saying? Nothing else we can do. Try to apply it, you know, a little bit more, a little bit later. So we got this body, man. That's real dirty. Also a little dry, man. We got this from the old dollar twenty-five tree. Furniture Polish. This is like 0.27 kilobots of grease. You know what I mean? It's not too, not too Polish, man. It's just a little bit of polish, man. So we're going to clean front, back, side and side, man. Get it as cleanly as possible. You know what I'm saying? Cleanliness is next to cleanliness and cleanliness as well, right? We know that. Be careful around the tender spots. I'll see you after we've been cleaned. We'll try to add a little bit more grease to this too. Just keep on greasing her up. That's right, Hoss. All right, so we let it sit for about an hour. We applied that like five or six times. Still, you know what I mean? But the rest of it, and I know it's been all polished, man. It looks like a fucking brand new Mercury Dime in 1943, bro. Wartime fine. Look at that on the ground, Mary. Pick it up. Wish me good luck. I'll never see you again. The better, the sooner. So, what do we do now, man? Let's take a furniture marker and just sort of clean these little edges up. You know what I'm saying? There's a little... Tiny blemishes here and there can easily be concealed. You know what I'm saying? Just a couple little nicks and nicks. Can be put to sleep forever. I think I might have just given it another one. I call it the Hindenburger. I'll see you in a minute. See that? It's like the AI de aging process of Harrison Ford and a new Indiana Jones, man. We didn't get every nook and cranny, but we got the right ones. We want to give the impression of like, you know what I'm saying? An instrument in extremely good condition with very little wear. That's what the old Get Kick collection is all about. So, let's see this, man. Let's see this is all fucking cloudy. Cloudy. Let's put a little piece of paper here so we don't get this fucked up. Let's take a piece of steel wool and go over this right now. I'll show you after I'm done. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, there it is, man. Didn't really do that much. Took off the grime, but there was like some sort of, you know what I mean? Oh, what was going on here? But... Corrosion in the chromium, man. The chromium is all corroded, man. Fake chrome, man. So, it looks good. Looks decent, man. I'm happy. Uh, Time to move on. This isn't the best. This is for like B stock guitars. I got it kind of as like a cheap alternative to the butcher's wax, which is like, a, you know what I mean? It's like the last Tasmanian tiger, man. You know what I mean? I don't want to use it up on something like this. So let's get it all waxed up, right? Tighten them strings. I'll see you. Make lamb shot. There's nothing else really to see here, folks. We're talking enough. <laughs> and there it is, man. A surprise stunner. As set up, this is a great little instrument. It's a little beast. Sounds great with these strings on it. You know, a happy accident. These strings came out in the mid-60s because of the folk rock thing. The LaBella folk. You know what I mean? Strings they are meant to be put on, I guess, like guitars like this, parlor guitars. I'm just trying to make them sound a little different because most of these guitars, like the 
Harmony 929 kind of, you know, student guitars. I don't sound like crap. Actually look better with the furniture polish. Once I put the wax on there, it started looking all fingerprinty, you know what I mean? I don't know. You know what I mean? There's the serial number. If anybody ever finds that Rosetta Stone. You know what I'm saying? For Eggman to figure out what the fuck those serial numbers mean. Nobody's ever cracked the code yet. If we crack the code, we'll figure out exactly what year or what's from. See some glue here. This is actually factory glue. From the uh, pick guard. You know what I'm saying? They're trying, I can see they're trying to like even polish it out. You know what I'm saying? Fucked it up. You know what I'm saying? Should be a second. But it's actually a nice little guitar. Right? A string strung the right way. Hey, Alex. Remember Nick? Family ties? Alex. You don't remember that shit, right? You guys are all like, you know what I'm saying? Too young to remember that shit. You know, hold it. I'll smoke me bulbs. Let's hear it, man. I've been talking to you so much lately. I was blah, 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 like a fucking turkey. You know what I'm saying? It ain't too close to Thanksgiving, so I'm going to let you hear it. And after that, I'll say, peace be with you. Look at me, son. Peace be with you. Look at me, son. Yes, yes, yes. From Alexander Apfelbaum. Apfelbaum, yes. A-P-F-E-L-P-A-U-M. Apfelbaum. <laughs> A little Eggman treat, man. A little treat. It's kind of like a wonder guitar. They say in Germany, a little wonder guitar. <laughs> Walking around the woods playing a little parlor guitar, playing that thing, showing up to your little hut. That can be your goal. Where are the papers? <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna try it and play a little. This is how I just heard this on the radio like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I don't even know if I, I could use I just wrote these words down. But I love this song, man. Oh, should be Otis, man. Sorry. Sorry, man. <laughs> For the music I hear, I'll be allowed. Blue flowers echo to a cherry cloud. Cause I was born, pink and blue, we'll try to ask. Is it cool? Is it cool? And if you get there before I do, Brother Johnson. I think one of the Brothers Johnsons is actually still alive, and the other one is. And that's the cool one with the glasses. The bass player is still alive. Hey, man. They're both cool. Is that cool? Sugar Yotis. Brothers Johnson. That's the blueprint for Prince. Peace be with you. Take care of yourself. See you soon. If there's a soon. <laughs> <laughs>